scrape that off so it doesn't go splashing when it hits you. That one would be cold enough for me to open, but I'm going to go ahead and spin this last rosy for you here. Yes, but we stick to the same holds over and over the same day. Uh, when we have a production cycle going, we'll take uh, a list. We do anywhere from 3 to 20 spins of a given mold uh, on its cycle to fill existing orders. Uh, so what the casters will have is they'll have up to 20 molds in this line. They'll have a return rack down here that the rubber is cooling down and a, the rack over here where the metal is cooling down. Uh, because we use the rubber molds, the, the chief component that gives rubber its elasticity is oil. And the oil will be cooked out by the metal eventually. So, right. so we keep try and keep the molds as cool as possible. Or room temperature itself is actually bad because that freezes the metal really fast. We actually like to keep the molds at about 150 degrees or so for the Spins, but we actually keep every mold until it begins to show signs of wear. Uh, uh, we'll develop what we call tear-out. And tear-out, uh, we have a snake man that's really bad about it. He's it's, it's got his mouth open, so he's got this big long jaw going like this. Did you get that? Okay. And uh, that, that, the rubber comes up under the chin here, and every time you pull them out, the rubber, the metal pulls on that rubber. Eventually, it will cut a hole in the rubber, and then as it keeps doing that, that sharp bit of metal that now fits in that slice will begin to cut the rubber elsewhere. So eventually what will happen is that guy's chin will start to fill up with uh, what looks like rock. And when we notice that that is going to happen, we throw the molds out and make it. If we can get a hundred or so, um, a lot more than that if it's a simple, clean, flat piece with no undercuts or sharp edges. So we've got all these Cassies here. And then anything that doesn't come out, these, these we can't use or do anything with, so we just put those right back in the middle. I could drop it in all the way or I could put it in halfway and show you how quickly it melts. Totally. I was mad. Ron was supposed to make a whole bunch of those zombie apocalypse line. We have like 10 of them. Yeah. We were going to make them and post them up all over the shop, and he just didn't get to it in Aww. time. Hopefully next year. So then we have Rosie's little uh, French. Oh, that is awesome. Those, now that they've been removed from the insulating rubber, are probably now cool enough to touch, but they may still be warm. Let's find out. Oh, no. Warm at all. Uh, ordinarily, our casters would be putting these into one of these yellow bins, which they would then drop a colored poker chip into. Uh, if the caster is doing their job properly, all the pieces they produce look identical. And that means that all the pieces that Eric produces look exactly like the pieces that Melanie or the Melanie Melissa produces. But it would look exactly like all the pieces that Aaron produces. So I wouldn't be able to tell who did what. If they're not doing their job and they've got a setting on their machine wrong or they're using uh, a, a bad mold or something, I need to be able to tell who did it, who made these pieces if they don't turn out well. So they drop in the colored poker chip. It's got a, uh, an orange chip in it. I know Eric made it. It's got a black chip. I know that was Melissa. Oh, here's the rosies, by the way. Like I said, normally our casters would be producing uh, one spin approximately every 25 seconds. You have just enough time under production situation to walk down here, put the mold in, put the lid, or come down here, pick whichever line is at the front, put it in the bucket you need, come back down here, and repeat the process. So you're basically moving this six feet back and forth all day. It's going, um, but I don't have any of the equipment out what we have is we have these quartz cavities that are the shapes of the various blisters that we have. 
we would put the plastic blister in the board. We put the figure inside. We put the card on it. The board is going to press down. There's a, there's a board in here that's heated to 300 degrees. It'll press down. And where the cork forces the pressure, it's going to seal. Uh, the cardboard has a glue on it, so we're actually melting an adhesive to the plastic. We're not melting the plastic, so we're not generating any toxic fumes. It goes back to our philosophy earlier, dead employees don't work quite this way. So if I press this button, it's going to spin. Spin. That little plate's going to come down. And that's what does the scene. It only takes about three seconds. Uh, from here, everything gets barcoded and put on these shelves that are kind of off limits right now. Um, but we put them all in boxes with barcodes on them. And then we have computers at every workstation similar to this one. We have a barcode reader at the computer. And that allows you to uh, identify where it goes in the process. The most useful tool we have here at the Wheel of Pain is this software if it'll actually open up. There we go. So let's say we take uh, 30, uh, 23, 77. That's the Highland Kill Dragon. It's got a whole bunch of pieces. So it'll take a second for it's going to go hit the database, pull up all the information. It'll tell me everything that goes in it. It's going to show me a picture of the figure so that I can see, and then it's going to give me a list down here of exactly which, part. which parts go in it. So our packagers, when they come over here, they don't have to guess, oh, do I have the right things? Yeah. Is it going to work? It's going to make me look like an idiot. Okay, oh, work. There, there we go. So here's the list. It tells me what kind of blister goes in, what kind of box. Um, and then it tells me the top of the head, the top of the body, the bottom of the body, all the parts scroll down through. Here's the total number of parts that should be in the blister. So I know if I don't have nine things, in front of me that I'm missing something and then eventually I'll look at it and show me a picture so if I, I can tell if I don't have those the, the pieces I have in front of me don't look like that then I have the wrong thing that's actually Matt Clark since I took over his job and obviously he's still here he's actually building our software for us so he's redesigning that uh, every couple of weeks he comes out and goes, oh, okay, I, I made a new improvement, now it's more efficient, it does this better. You know, like that. The, the latest addition was that it now tells us how many are, are on an order right now, so that we know how many are we actually supposed to make. So the, the packagers at the wheel don't just make as many as they have, now we have a system that can tell them when to stop. Cool. Or so nice. That's what we used to have to do in the past. Cool. So. Cool. All right, well, thank you guys very much. Thank you. Uh,